All right, we are back in the garage. Uh, it's another day. And uh, the charging just finished when I came in here. So you see, it says 100%. It's, well, yeah, it's not pulling anything. And let's check out uh, this app again, scan my Tesla. Let's go to the performance tab. Okay, now it's um, it's like this when we are not, uh, we are not in draw. Ah, shit, okay, that always uh, brings up. Okay, let's try, uh, let me. Just right, we're now at IKEA. So, uh, what happened since last shot was that uh, I went inside, had some food, came back, and the car showed 99%. And I was looking look at the app, and it was 99.3 or something. So, I figured, okay, let me just drive a little bit. So, I drove to Olavskor and back again. And now we are at IKEA, juicing up again. I started a live stream, so we will get it back to 100%. And I will just show you guys some useful stuff here. So see, it looks like this. We have 470 kilometers. We are at 96.9, well, about 97%. And see that the battery power is hovering around uh, 7.5 kilowatt, roughly. So we are at the uh, 11 kilowatt AC charging station. So what we're gonna do now is fire up the heater. And then you see that this one should stay the same. Uh, yeah, you see it's still hovering around seven something, but we are pulling extra power now to heat up uh, the cabin. So when I just started, it was, um, then the, um, the power to the battery was uh, only, well, I mean, when I switched off the heater, it was pulling over 10 kilowatt to the battery. So I had to switch the, the HVAC off, but now we can have it on because we have so high state of charge. So there is the, um, uh, the live stream, so this is a bit different because now the live stream can see the screen there plus a little bit of blurry background. Let me see if I wipe. Yeah, so they see just some nice bouquet. <laughs> so now comes the waiting game. Wait for 100%. All right, we've been charging for a bit and you see um, the car now claims 35 minutes to 100%. You see, by the way, we are close to 100% now. It says 99.9. .9. And we still, we still get 483, so the whole balancing or calibration process here hasn't gained us any more uh, kilometers, but you know, don't be blinded by this number. Too many people, they are caught up with this number. They think, oh, you know, this number is really important. Uh, no, it's not. What matters is the number of kilowatt hours you can get out. And here we see that now we're charging at about one kilowatt. And we are at 99.7 or 8. I'm not sure which one I should trust, but okay. Uh, this one is the one that will be displayed anyway. Is it 999? It's 999 now. Uh, so look at that. Wow. Max, it seems like we are very close to the, to the top now. We have almost no region power available. And this one says there's a cell volt. Well, maybe you can switch here. I want to see the cell. I mean, the, the voltages. Okay, we have them here. Uh, 4.2. It's supposed to stop at 4.2. So we're close to the to the top now. Just wait a little bit more, and then we can go switch to that one again. I like this one. Yeah, you can customize your own uh, tab. All right, the car stopped charging. It says charging complete. 484 kilometers. It was 485 right before I started shooting video. And if you look here, we have nine. According to uh, the BMS, we have 99.9%. Uh, and also very low region. Well, before it stopped, it was showing two kilowatt region uh, limit only. So now uh, I reset, let me see, I have this trip here and I reset it. So what this basically does is it takes, um, it takes a snapshot of all the variables, the, the odometer, the, all the totals in DC charge, AC charge region, all of that. And then you basically create, you can create multiple trips. This is a really awesome feature because it means that once we start driving now, uh, you, you can just close down the app because it already took the snapshot of, uh, of the data. And then next time you bring up the app, you go there and it will take a delta, the diff of the before and after. Uh, that's way better than what I've seen in Can Ion app where it logs you have to constantly log it and then when you sometimes sometimes the <laughs> the app will bug and then you lose the logging and then the whole trip is messed up so all right now um actually i'm gonna show you something we're gonna switch to this uh, tab before we start driving you see we're pulling about 250 watts so this one is not counted in the car's trip meter but this 
in fact counted my trip meter in here. So now we will drive slowly and see how much we get out of this. this is a, now we go back to the classic uh, capacity test procedure that I always do. All right, we are on the move. I'm playing some music. Yeah, so I need to rest my voice. But you see now, we are down to, I'm going to pause it for now. Uh, we are down to 81% state of charge. Uh, we are regening a little bit downhill uh, and everything looks normal. So uh, we have a little bit of headwind. So see, according to this um, consumption number here, we have 196 watt hour per kilometer. That's kind of high going at 90 kilometers per hour. Right? It's actually 89 kilometers per hour according to GPS. But uh, you see here, I will show you the windsock. Let me wipe a little bit. There you see the windsock. Yeah, so we have a little bit of headwind. We have wet roads. So, um, but we'll turn around, we'll turn around a little bit further north and then we go back and then the consumption should drop. So this will take a long time to finish, about four more hours of driving. We have been driving for uh, three hours and 20 minutes. Yeah, it's pretty far. You can see here that uh, we have, we've driven almost 300 kilometers in a single charge and we still have uh, almost 100 kilometers ago and I now navigated to the supercharger just for fun I want to see if the battery will start preheating and if you look over here let me try to give you a, a good view here kind of you see that uh, the battery has been keeping it I mean the car has been keeping the battery steadily at okay let me try this better at 27 degrees Celsius uh, based on the numbers here I see that it's using the leftover heat from the motor to heat up the battery pack to keep it at around 27, 28. Yeah, I want 27 throughout the whole trip now. So I will see, uh, supposedly, um, the car has a method of heating up the stator to heat up the battery. That's, that's how it uses the, I mean, it doesn't have a, a battery heater, but it uses the stator <laughs> to heat up the battery pack. We'll see if that occurs or not. So. Um, no message here yet about preheating the battery, so we just have to wait for it. All right, we just passed um, Nebenes and we just keep going. We will turn around at uh, Dahl as usual, but just want to point out that uh, it did in fact not preheat the battery at all. I think the BMS figures out that it doesn't have to heat up the battery in this, in this case. So we have to try to find it out uh, some other day. You see here, battery is hovering around 28 degrees Celsius now. Right, we are now back, well, we are back at uh, Ionity Dahl. And if you look at the screenshot here, you see that we have spent, well, if you look at the trip meter, 177 watt per kilometer, but there's of course some, some measurement errors there. It could be some fractions. Uh, it's uh, of course not exactly 177, but if you do the math there, it would be 67 uh, point something kilowatt hours. And then um, also the car shows, okay, the car claims we spent 67 kilowatt hours, but if you look at the trip that I just um, recorded before, that one claims also 67.1 kilowatt hour. And then we see that we ended up with 3.8%. And we started with 99.9%, uh, so we spend 96.1% exactly. We can round it down to 96. Uh, and then if you do the math based on that one again, we see that uh, if we drove to zero, we would get 69.8% uh, kilowatt hours. Last time I measured, I was getting 69.6. So you see that even without this OBD, this wonderful OBD tool, I was still able to measure it quite accurately, uh, even with the, some of these uh, round-off errors, you know. So the difference here is just 0.2 kilowatt hours, and very consistent test. <laughs> uh, only explanation could be that on the previous test, I uh, drove maybe a little bit faster, and maybe I had more uh, heat loss, but I actually believe that it shouldn't matter too much, the heat loss, because the car is so efficient and it has very low internal resistance in the battery. I believe that the reason why it was, 90, uh, was slightly lower last time was in fact because of round off error only. That's my theory. But uh, not, let's not wait too long because now I want to plug in and start charging. You're gonna see what happens. I heard some crazy stuff about what happened when you fast charge over here.
But anyway, uh, very interesting video. I, I think I think it was at least interesting. I don't know about you guys, but just poking around with that uh, OBD, I uh, will scan my Tesla. It's really useful to see what's going on under the hood, really. So, and also we confirm again that the capacity hasn't changed. I mean, I tried the, the balancing thing and it didn't really help. Okay, I might have done something wrong. I'm not sure, but from some people say that, you know, the whole, no, actually not the balancing, the, the, the um, calibration thing, it's not going to help or something. I mean, it might help you get a better est range estimate, but I know about that one. So actually based on this test now, these two videos, I recommend for you guys to not do any calibration or balancing because the car knows best, you know, the car knows this better than you. So just let it do whatever it needs to do, you know, heat up the battery, cool it down, uh, it already does some kind of balancing, bleeding or whatever. So, so you know, don't worry about it. Just charge it to 60% or 90% or whatever you like and try to stay above 10%. That's my recommendation. So don't go lower than 10%. Try to avoid it because if you go too low, you can risk of uh, hurting the battery in the long run. So anyway, I think that will be now. Uh, <laughs> that will be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.